good evening. Weir's experts admit that U.S. government shut down for the first time in the last 17 years could potentially cause a financial crash, unlike anything that the world has ever seen before. If the U.S. government purposely wanted to damage the global financial system, the best way that they could have done would be to default U.S. In fact, it's coming again. The yield on 10-year U.S. Treasuries is skyrocketing. The S&P 500 has been down for nine of the last 11 trading days. And troubling economic news is pouring in from all over the planet. Much anticipated financial correction is rapidly approaching and investors are starting to race for the exits. We have not seen so many financial trouble signs all come together at one time like this since prior to the last major financial crisis. It's almost as if a perfect storm is brewing and a lot of smart money has already gotten out of stocks and bonds. Could it be possible that the world is heading towards another nightmare of financial crisis? Could we see a repeat of 2008 or potentially even something worse than that? Of course, lots of people believe that the world will never see another major financial crisis like experienced in 2008 ever again. A lot of people do think that this type of doom and gloom talk is all foolish. It is those kind of people that did not see the last financial crash coming and they chose not not to prepare for the next one, even though the warning signs were very clear. Let's hope for the best, but let's also prepare for the worst. And right now, things do not look feasible at all. And this economic crisis will result in worse consequences where survival will be very difficult. For all this upcoming financial global crisis and the U.S. government shutdown and the negotiations between the president of U.S., Barack Obama, and the congressional Republicans. What is the problem between the two, and how does the U.S. economical crisis can affect the global economical crisis, and then ultimately down to us in Pakistan, what would be the effects of all that? We would like to find out for this analysis. Today, I have Zaid Hamid with me. Thank you, Mr. Zahid Hamid, for joining You're me. You're welcome. As you would have seen that today we would like to know the reasons of U.S. government shutdown and then the effect of U.S. shutdown on the global economical crisis. But before we start our discussion, we have put together a report on the U.S. government shutdown and all the reasons behind it. Let's have a look at that and then we will get back to our discussion. U.S. economy is the number one economy in the world. What happens there affects all over the world. In the new globalized world of closely interdependent economies, crisis can affect almost every part of the world. The world economy is not in a position to withstand too much shock at this time when all are just recovering as a global economy. IMF says failure to raise the U.S. debt selling would be a far worse threat to the global economy than the current shutdown. The shutdown is due to a budget standoff between President Barack Obama and Congress. Mr. Obama and congressional leaders have been in political deadlock for days. The U.S. government closed non-essential operations after Congress failed to strike a deal on a new budget. The shutdown has left more than 700,000 employees on unpaid leave, closed national parks, tourist sites, government websites, office buildings and more. On 17th October, the U.S. government will run out of cash to pay its bills unless Congress agrees an increase in the debt selling by 17th October. Washington will be left with about $30 billion in cash to meet its obligations, about half the $60 billion a day needed. The U.S. Treasury warned a default would be unprecedented and has the potential to be catastrophic. Credit markets could freeze, the value of the dollar could plummet. U.S. interest rates could skyrocket, the negative spillovers could reverberate around the world. And there might be a financial crisis and recession that could echo the events of 2008 or worse. A report said that if this were to happen, the impact could last for more than a generation. The current shutdown is costing the U.S. economy an estimated $300 million a day. It could save as much as 0.2% from GDP each week. The government is closed. Mr. Zahid Ahmed, as you saw the report, and uh, we would like to analyze today the global economic crisis and specifically the U.S. economic crisis. Since we saw a U.S. government shut down there, it's been almost 12 days now that the U.S. government has been shut down. What's the problem there? What's the problem between Barack Obama and the congressional Republicans over the Obama health care plans? What's happening in U.S.? You see, 
to understand what is happening in the United States, the reasons for it are actually insane. <laughs> On one hand, whatever is happening is financial insanity. Nobody would believe that the strongest economy in the world is actually crashing down like this, that the government does not even have money to pay salaries to the U.S. government employees. The U.S. Army is not getting paid. U.S. federal employees are not getting paid. And how come it came to this? Yeah, On the and other then, hand, and then how come the biggest economy, economic country of the world does not have money to pay? This is what we're saying. And you know, on the other hand, it's actually hilarious. Because whatever is happening to the United States today is an outcome of almost 200 years. It's not the fault of Obama government or this particular regime. It's, it was coming. For the last 200 years, the founding fathers of America were warning of exactly the same scenario that you see today. What we are going to speak today, you would not hear media talking about this. This is the most profound, most audacious financial scam in the history of mankind. What is going on in the United States today? The Federal Reserve Bank, the Feds or the Federal Reserve Bank is primarily responsible for bringing about this global crash, particularly in America first and then of course the reverberations are going to be global. And what is Federal Reserve? Federal Reserve is a bank which is responsible for printing American banknotes, to put it very simply. And, but the funny part is, or the insane part is, that the Federal Reserve is not owned by the US government. Federal Reserve is a privately owned bank owned by a group of Jewish bankers. That's the insanity. The Rothschild so, Foundation, the Rockefeller, the JP Morgan, these kind of gangsters, financial gangsters who are known in history to be money lenders, they are actually the owners of the privately owned Federal Reserve Corporation. Now, this is the funny part. And now US owes money to those Feds. What is, what, uh, you, I have to explain to you how did this all come to this point. In 1912, the US Federal Reserve Bank was created. And these banksters, these crooked bankers were so weird, so powerful, they actually got the Constitution of the United States changed into the fact that U.S. government was stripped of its powers to print its own banknotes. And the U.S. government, if they need money, would take the money on loan from the Federal Reserve Bank. Basically, in other words, the entire U.S. government would be in debt. The entire U.S. nation would be in debt to a few private bankers from whom they are going to take money on loan to, to use within the United States. Now, so what actually happens is that U.S. governments, whenever they need the money, they borrow it from the Federal Reserve. So a debt is incurred. A public debt comes on the U.S. government. And U.S. government uses that money to pay salaries, to do ex expenditures, to development works and everything. But when, of course, these bankers, the Federal Reserve also want the money to be paid back. So the U.S. government starts to tax its own population. So the Americans are taxed by the U.S. government. The money is collected and then given back on interest to the Federal Reserve, which is again owned by few bankers, few private bankers, and that's the funny part. So, what actually happens is that this debt that the US government keeps on accumulating over the years has now reached a stage of almost 17 trillion dollars. Which the is... The debt ceiling that they're talking about. Which is bigger than the size of the total US economy. To give you a very simple example, for example, if your income is 100 rupees per month, and your expenditures are 500 rupees per month, there is no way you can meet your expenditures. So the only way to meet your expenditures would be to take loan from somebody else. And if the loan in upon you is 5,000 rupees, then it means now there is absolutely no possibility on between the heaven and the earth that you can pay your loan back. You can never pay your loan back. It will stay there. It will stay. In fact, loan will keep on increasing to, a, to an... The, the, the lifestyle, the economic policy that you have built, that you will live your life on loan, is an unsustainable policy. It's unnatural. No civilization, no power on earth can live on loan. And this is what the Americans have been doing for the last hundred years almost. They've been living off loan. And now the lo collective loan upon the American government, American, the loan on the American society as a whole is into hundreds of, is, is about almost 122 trillion dollars. Way more than their debt ceiling and all that. Giving you the example of that. See, 
what happens is I have to explain because this is so insane that it really takes time to understand what we are talking here. Because normal people would go into a state of disbelief, denial. No, 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 it's not possible. How can the Americans be so insane that they are controlled by a bunch of Jewish bankers? But this is exactly what's happening. On one hand, the American government takes loan, and that loan now has reached the $17 trillion ceiling. On the other hand, the American population also lives on debt. Everybody in America lives on debt. Their credit cards, even if they go to eat, they pay from the credit card. Paying they're from the credit card the means they're leasing their homes, cars, exactly mortgages, leasing their home, rent. leasing their car, the mortgage, mortgages, everything. So what is basically happening? And from where do they take loans from? Again, the same banks which own the Federal Reserve. So on one hand, the American nation is indebted to these bankers. On the other hand, right. the U.S. government is indebted to these bankers. So basically, the money which is in the American society, they, they, draw, they draw domestic produce, the national produce, the income generation capacity, everything is indebted to a bunch of few bankers who control the Federal Reserve. And the U.S. people, the public, are in debt to the tune of almost $122 trillion. And the U.S. government is in debt of almost $17 trillion. And now the debt ceiling, the Constitution has put a ceiling that you cannot take more loan beyond this. Because right, right. now the loan has become bigger than the entire gross domestic produce of the American economy. So now this is a scenario where what, lately what happened was, recently, that American government also started to take loans from other governments also. Because they realized that taking loans from Fed was expensive. Those started taking loans from China, started taking loans from Japan, started like, taking loans from Saudi Arabia. Why from other countries? Due from to the other interest countries. rate? You see? Due to the interest rate, that's why? Because, of, because they, were, they were issuing bonds on very low interest rates. Okay. And they said this is one way of taking money in taking more loans. Because Americans only live on loans. Either they take it from Federal Reserve, even if they take it from Federal Reserve, it will be a loan. So, and that will be on a higher interest rate. So they decided to take loan from Japan, uh, uh, China, and other strong economies of the world, private, pri private corporations, private individuals. Anybody who can buy a U.S. bond is basically giving a loan to the U.S. government. And U.S. government pays them interest on a very low interest rate. So what is happening now is that once the loan ceiling, the, the debt ceiling that you have upon you becomes so huge that everybody knows that now U.S. government cannot pay back its loan, then even the lenders become nervous. The lenders become nervous because now your, your loan is bigger than your entire wealth that you produce. So how are no you going to pay it back? So how are you going to pay it back? So, and that is where the fear of default comes in, that U.S. might miss a payment, payment on the interest on the bonds that they owe to China, they owe to Japan, they owe to the private individuals and corporations who, who have bought the U.S. bonds and they expect interest payments in return. But now when the U.S. government does not even have money to pay its employees, how would they pay to their main lenders, the governments, the corporations and the individuals? So this is what we mean by missing the, missing the bond payment or defaulting. And once the U.S. government defaults, what will happen is the lenders will become really nervous, which means that now they feel that their money that they have put into the U.S. economy is going to sink. Back. Is going to sink. It's not coming back. So either they will stop lending and demand their money, whatever they have invested. So, so what happens after Octo October 17th deadline? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, if, if they did not reach Ob uh, Barack Obama and the Congressional Republicans, if they do not reach some kind of resolution, then what's going to happen on October 17th? You see, before we come to that question, I would like to take you back slightly into history. Again, as we said, whatever is happening today, their forefathers, the founding fathers of America had seen it coming 200 years ago. And I would like to give some quotes here from their founding, founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln. Sure. All, I would like to quote something because that will really make you understand what happened. What happened was when the America was created, lots of private bankers came in and they said they started to issue currency in place of gold. They started to, to the American economy was still, lots of people were using gold and silver coins always. So these bankers, what they did was they asked people to bring their gold to them and they issued receipts which is basically American dollar is actually theoretically is a receipt of gold because otherwise paper itself is no, it has no value. It, is, it, is a print, it comes out of a printing press. It has only value if it is backed by something. So the private bankers came, asked people to give them gold and started issuing dollars, print, or started printing currency bank, bank notes. This was, a, this was, the scam was seen by the founding father. And I would like to quote here, but Thomas Jefferson, he said this in 1816. I believe that banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. 
already they have raised up a moneyed aristocracy that has set the government at defiance. The issuing power of money should be taken away from the banks and restored to the people to whom it properly belongs. Thomas Jefferson said this in 1860s, about 100 years before the creation of Federal Reserve, that private banks must not be allowed to print money, but this responsibility, this duty must remain, this power must remain in the hand of the government. And so, also he said, if Americans ever allow banks to control the issue of their currency, now this is exactly what the Federal Reserve is doing, if Americans ever allow banks to control the issue of their currency, first by inflation and then by deflation, the banks will deprive the people of all property until the children will wake up homeless. This is exactly what is happening in America today. Thomas Jefferson warned us 150, almost 200 years ago of this, ultimately this will happen to America. The banks will issue the money, they will inflate the economy, they will deflate the economy, and ultimately Americans will wake up and realize they've got no money left, they'll be homeless. And this is exactly what is going to happen. And now, he also said, the modern theory of perpetuation of debt has drenched earth with blood and crushed its inhabitants under burdens ever accumulating. This theory that debts continue to accumulate, the debt continue to collect, like the debt taken by the American government in 1912 is still being paid it's seven, all genera getting seven generations it's all later, getting it's still being paid. That has said this theory, this economic practice for centuries have drenched the earth with blood and crushed its inhabitants under burden, ever accumulating this compound interest that keeps on accumulating. And also he said, and Andrew Jackson, another American president said, if Congress has the right under the Constitution to issue paper money, it was given to the, them to use themselves, not to be delegated to individuals or corporations. Congress gave a right to the US government to print money. So that right must stay with the US government and not handed over to private corporations, which in 1912, the US government of the time handed over this right to Federal Reserve, the private owned Jewish bankers. All founding fathers of America warned them not to do that. They did and that so in 1912. Happened. Again, Abraham Lincoln said this, the, government should, the government should create, issue and circulate all the currency and credits needed to satisfy the spending power of the government and the buying power of the consumers. By the adoption of these principles, the taxpayer will be saved immense sums of interest. Money will cease to be master and become the servant of humanity. Abraham Lincoln. You see, all the taxes that the American people have upon them now are because that the US government has to tax them to suck the blood out of the American public to pay to the Jewish bankers. This is what is happening. And all this is happening because against the advice of the founding fathers, the US government in 1912, they relieved themselves of the power, the ultimate power that they had to print money, they gave that power to the Jewish bankers of Federal Reserve. And again, one more thing, Theodore Roosevelt, he also said this, he said, the issue of currency should be lodged with the government and be protected from the domination by Wall Street. This is a very important point to note because nowadays you see in America there is a movement going on by the people saying, calling the Wall Street, Occupy Wall Street movement. Because now the people have come out on the street. They know that they have been robbed by the Wall Street bankers. Theodore Roosevelt at that time had warned, we are opposed to provisions which would place our currency and credit system in private hands. He said, we oppose a system which will put our currency and credit in private hands. This is Theodore Roosevelt said this. And now again, Woodrow Wilson actually was the president who signed it. But once he signed it, just imagine what he said. Woodrow Wilson was the American president who signed this decree that the US government will hand over its power to print currency to the Jewish bankers. And then what he said after that. I am a most unhappy man. I have unwittingly ruined my country. A great industrial nation is controlled by a system of credit. Our system of credit is concentrated. The growth of the nation, therefore, and all our activities are in the hands of a few men. We have come to be one of the worst ruled, one of the most completely controlled and dominated governments in a civilized world, no longer governed by free opinion, no longer a government by conviction and the vote of the majority, but by a government of the opinion and duress of a small group of dominant men. There is no democracy in America. Woodrow Wilson was warning us after he had done the blunder of handing over the power of printing currency to a private corporation. And then, of course, I want to, again, Otto von Bismarck, he was a German prince, 
he said about Abraham Lincoln, the death of Abraham Lincoln was a disaster to Christian dom. For the Christian world, it was a disaster. Right, right. There was no man in the United States great enough to wear his boots and the bankers went anew to grab the riches because once Abraham Lincoln died, the bankers got free power to do whatever he wanted. Abraham Lincoln was actually killed because he was resisting the Jewish bankers. I fear that foreign bankers with their craftiness, tortuous tricks will entirely control the exuberant riches of America and use it systematically to corrupt the civilization. This was said by Otto von Bismarck, the German Chancellor. All so, those wise men had warned of one catastrophe that you are seeing today. The not U.S. To wealth privatized the, the privatized the power of issuing currency to, to, to from government control to private hands, and the those private, private sector, hands which has happened today. which has happened in 1912, and today the disaster that you are seeing in the world is because of this very simple fact. I would like to quote one simple sure, and, and quote then, from Henry Ford. Sure. Henry Ford was one of the biggest car makers, Ford cars you have right, heard right, about. Right. He also written a book on international jury and how the Jews work. And he has said this, it is well enough that people of the nation do not understand our banking and monetary system, because Americans do not understand how their banking and monetary system and Federal Reserve work. Actually, Americans don't understand this. And Henry Ford said that. It is well enough that people of the nation do not understand our banking and monetary system, for if they did, I believe there would be a revolution before tomorrow morning. Imagine Henry Ford said this. He if warned us so many years ago. He said if people understood fathers, what the bankers they, they are doing, them. people would come out on the street and there will be revolution in America. That's what the bankers are doing to us. Uh, Mr. Zayat Ahmed, before we proceed our discussion to the next level and find out that why U.S. that claims to be and happens to be the biggest, the largest economic uh, country of the world, why is U.S. in this mess today? We will find out more on this. We will stay with us. We'll be right back after a short break. We are talking on the global economic crisis and the major U.S. government shutdown happening that we are seeing in which President Barack Obama has accused Republicans or the Congressional Republicans in blackmailing America for exchanging the reforms in the health care with reopening the government and adjusting the debt ceiling. But let's see what's going to happen. Are they going to reach any kind of uh, agreement in between the Obama and the Congressional Republicans? Or do we uh, have to wait till October 17th? Or will we see something earlier than that? But before we get back to our discussion, we have, uh, the resort, we have a segment from Barack Obama expressing his concerns over the U.S. government shutdown. Let's have a look at that, and then we will get back to our discussion. If Congress doesn't pass a budget in 10 days, a week from Monday, the government will shut down. A government shutdown shuts down many services that the American people rely on. Unfortunately, there is a faction on the far right of the Republican Party right now. It's not everybody, but it's a pretty big faction who convinced their leadership to threaten a government shutdown and potentially threaten to not raise the debt ceiling if they can't shut off the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. This is the United States of America. We're not some banana republic. This is not a deadbeat nation. Mr. Zad Hamid, as you saw him, you know, uh, let's, let's hope that they're going to reach some kind of an agreement before October 17th. But before going on a break, you mentioned that uh, American government doesn't have the authority to print and feds have it. So why can't our American government take that, uh, that authority from feds and have it in its own hands so he doesn't have to rely on feds anymore? You see, Obama just said we are not a banana republic. They are actually a banana republic where 
nowhere in human history you would find a group of bankers controlling such might and power of American government. American government is actually helpless in front of those bankers. Your question that you asked, why doesn't the American government start printing its own banknotes? In why that, rely on Feds? Why rely on Feds? Why take the, your own money on loan from Feds? Right. The fact of the matter is that Obama wants to live. He doesn't want to be killed. Kennedy tried that in 1963, and I'm going to read this out to you now. This is exactly the reason why John F. Kennedy was killed. He actually tried to make an amendment in the U.S. Constitution that right to print banknotes, right to issue currency would come back to the U.S. government and then the U.S. government will not have to take loans from feds for all the expenditures that they are doing. All this circus, all this banana republic joke that you see about America today is because the U.S. government does not have the power to print its own banknote. And Kennedy knew that he will be assassinated. Let me read it out to you. Just 10 days before his assassination, he made this speech in Columbia University and said, the high office of the president has been used to foment a plot to destroy the American freedom. And before I leave office, I must warn the, I must inform the citizens of this flight. Kennedy knew the office has been used, the president's office has been used to create a conspiracy against the American nation. And in June, on June 4th, 1963, he made an attempt. He made two attempts actually. First attempt that he made was that power to print banknotes should come back to the U.S. government. And he also tried to revert back to the gold standard. American currency, before 19, the Federal Reserve Bank was created, was actually dollar was backed by gold. Till 1971, theoretically, American government was backed by $35 to an ounce. And if you take dollars to the Federal Reserve, Federal Reserve was supposed to give you the gold for it. This was in, in 19, in the, during the First World War, between the First and Second World War, this law was made that American people will not be allowed to use gold. Every American citizen was asked to deposit gold into the Federal Reserve and take dollars instead. In America, that's how the Jews did. They actually made a law that people of America could not keep gold. Anybody with gold bullion, gold coins, they had to deposit to the Federal Reserve. So Federal Reserve started accumulating gold and people were not allowed to use gold. Kennedy tried to revert back to the gold standards. He said the US dollar must be backed by gold because once you remove the backing, once you remove the gold standard, then it's a printing press. You can print as many dollars as you want and basically American dollar would be a fake receipt. There would be nothing at back. So, it, so fake receipts are primarily fraud. So actually today, every American dollar that you have is a fake receipt. It's fraud. So Kennedy tried to stop that. So Kennedy dollars, the Kennedy, he started silver dollars, he wanted to start gold coins. Actually, if you, even if you Google Kennedy dollars, you will find lots of coins, pictures of lots of coins, which Kenny, Kennedy actually circulated of silver coins and they started to become currency. Just like dollars, coins were also being transferred and used. So he got assassinated for that? And, and first that, and second he wanted to take this power away from Federal Reserve into the hands of the US government. He got assassinated just 10 days ago. He made that, before his assassination, he made that speech in the Columbia University and then he was assassinated. He tried that, but he could not do that. So this is where and he knew what the secret societies are doing to the American. See, the American Federal Reserve, if you pick up the US $1 bill, there's a stamp on it, a pyramid in an eye. This pyramid in an eye is a symbol of Freemasons, Illuminati. It's a private secret society of Jews. Actually, they control the American banknotes, Federal Reserve, U.S. economic system. Their secret societies control it. Even, I mean, Kennedy knew that. And he made a speech saying, the very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. You see, this what happens is, Kennedy said this, <coughs> Because he knew that the U.S. economy is being controlled by a Freemasonic secret society of Illuminati run by Jews. That's why the seal of a private secret society is on a U.S. dollar. Why would it be there? Okay. So you, you said, uh, Mr. Zayed Hamid, that Obama won't do it because he wants to live. So then the options that Barack Obama is left with is to negotiate with the Republicans for the reforms in the health care in exchange with the, with the reopening of the government see, and, all the, all these things and are, the debt, debt all you these, know, the raising in the debt ceiling. All these things are petty squabblings. They are petty arguments. The fact of the matter is, 
Obama can actually remove all the issues with the US economy has in one master stroke of passing a presidential order saying the US government will print its own money from today and they will not take any further loans. But since he is not doing that and they have already reached a ceiling of debt, rest of it is only arguments. It doesn't matter whether they agree to a term or Obamacare or cut taxes or basically all this argument is. So is it all planned then? It, it is all planned. The, the planning is to crush the American people more, to make the bankers more rich. Understand one thing, even if the, there, is, there, is inf there is inflation on the streets, people are jobless, people are homeless, people have nothing to eat, who benefits? It's the banker benefits. Why? Because the people are not able to pay their mortgages, people are not able to pay their credit card loans, people are not able to pay their education loans, people will be thrown out from their homes onto the streets, but, but why the would, wealth why, will be owned by the bankers. Why would Mr. Zahid Hamid, U.S. government, see its own people uh, miserable and let the feds take the benefits you see, of US all this government, crisis? U.S. government is even more miserable than its own people. The fact of the matter is, U.S. government cannot survive without the approval of the feds, the Jewish bankers. And the U.S. people are hopelessly dependent on those same Jewish bankers for their everyday survival. $122 trillion of debt on the American people, $17 trillion of debt on the U.S. government of the same group of people who belong to a secret society which Kennedy warned us against. So this is what the whole crisis is. So whether the government collapses, the global economy collapses, the U.S. people become, go bankrupt, the, 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 the food rights in America, it doesn't matter to the bankers. They benefit in all cases. Republican, Democrat fights means nothing. It's only an argument about increasing the taxes, reducing the expenditure here, increasing the expenditure here. All these things are designed to create more and more profit for the private money lenders, which are very re respectfully called the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States. They're so, all private Jewish money lenders. So we have understood the Fed's role in all this. Now I would like to know that what IMF has to say mm -hmm. in this U.S. shutdown, U.S. government shutdown crisis. IMF has given the warning that the global economy will be seriously damaged if U.S. politicians fail to cut a deal to raise the U.S. debt ceiling. So how do you see this alarming bell from IF to IMF to U.S.? You see, the point is, why was U.S., despite the fact that U.S. has been printing shiploads of currency in 70s, 80s and 90s, why was there was no inflation in the United States? Why was the U.S. economy was still stable despite the fact that everybody knew the dollar is a fake currency? For the simple reason that the global oil market, the energy market was designed, such, designed as such that every country had to keep dollar as reserves to trade in oil, to deal in oil. To do bilateral trading, to do international trading, every country dealt primarily for the energy, for the oil and gas, they had to deal in dollars. That's why every country kept foreign exchange reserves in dollars and every dollar that was printed in the United States, which American government gave them out as loans, they were saved as foreign exchange reserves. Now, but once the US dollar becomes shaky, once the faith in dollar becomes unstable, when the people start to realize the US economy is going to collapse, people, the countries, the nations will start to dump dollar. People will stop using dollars as reserve currency. And all this dollar will start to flow back into the United States. And that means so much of dollar, lots of currency in, in America, and the inflation, the prices would start to go up. On, on the other hand, the international community will stop trading oil and stop trading with each other using the US dollar. This is already happening. China and Russia have already signed agreements where they are trading with each other in each other's currency, in ruble and in yuan. Uh, also, the, also the oil as well, energy as well. Iran has just done trading, lots of trading with, uh, with, um, with Turkey on real wealth, on gold. And Turkey is sending them gold, they are selling them oil. And they have removed banks and dollars completely in the middle. And this, if this starts to happen, all this global economic system that the World Bank, IMF, Federal Reserve have created will start crashing down completely for them. But the countries which have dollar will be destroyed with it. The countries which do not have dollar or they have gold or they are trading in their own mutual currencies would survive. And that is why you find every country in the world today, they are holding gold. Everybody is buying gold because they know dollar is crashing. And it's only a matter of time when the faith in dollar would be totally finished. So you, what you're saying is that U.S. dollar mm. will lose its value if such kind of collapses keep on happening. You see, the fact is, as we said, we gave you the example that now the debt on U.S. Is, has reached such a limit. Nobody is, 
willing to pay, will lend them more. And even their own constitution bars them from taking more loan from either from China or Japan, from any other country, or even from the Federal Reserve, because their own debt ceiling has arrived. Even if they increase the ceiling from $17 trillion to say $18 trillion, what will happen? Nothing. They'll only get a breather for a year, maximum. Uh, and within a year, this, whole, this ceiling will be uh, reached as well. And then so, so then what should be done? Isn't yeah. U.S. Uh, seeing all these consequences attached to this U.S. government yeah. shutdown, which has happened in the, in the last 17 years? You see what, what happens. You have heard this financial term of burst, bubbles and bursts. They use this for the stock market. Right, the bubble the stock, burst. Bubble, the stock markets bubble up and then they burst. Nothing is infinite in this universe. If you start pushing air into a balloon, it can only expand to a point and after that it has to explode. That's the natural cycle of it. You cannot keep on expanding it indefinitely. Especially when you are using a false credit growth economy, an economy which is based on fake currency, economy which is based on bank interest, an economy which does not have any gold backing or real wealth backing behind it, an economy which is purely based on fake printed paper print being printed out of a printing press by a few Jewish bankers which are giving it out as loan to the world and to the US people. This kind of economy is totally fraud, unsustainable. No matter what economic policies you deploy, at one point it's going to explode. At one point people are going to realize we want our gold back. At one point people are going to say this, we don't want to use this fake paper. We're going to go to some other fake paper, even Europe for that matter. For example, and this is something that Americans cannot cannot accept. They'll actually wage wars on the nations which try to dump dollars. I, I was talking to an Iranian official and I asked him, just a couple of years back, Iran actually had floated the idea of an oil exchange where they would trade in euros, not in dollars, where countries would come and buy oil and gas in euros. I asked the Iranians, why did you drop the idea? And the Iranian official said that US had actually threatened Iran that we will wage a war on Iran under any pretext, under weapons of mass destruction, and under terrorism or whatever. But the reason would be that Americans said that we would not allow any country to open up an oil exchange where people would be dealing in euro or yuan or ruble or any other currency because if that happens, then dollar would instantly crash. No country would keep the reserve of dollars and the dollar would actually be dumped. And once that is dumped and people will go for other currencies, that would be the end of the US civilization. They know that. You see, in America, the FEMA and US government is actually preparing for contingencies, actually preparing for disaster and riots on the streets. They're actually preparing for a possibility that they might have to impose martial law in America. And this is not a fallacy. This is not a hypothetical scenario. This is not something. Just imagine, the million US employees are not getting paid. You think they're going to stay in homes? A, a huge US army is not getting paid. All fully battle trained and armed, but they're not getting paid. You think they're going to stay at home? They might. I mean, they would riot, they would come on the streets. And if that happens, what would happen? The states would start to break up. The US, United States would become disunited states of America. The states would try to break up, take whatever they can grab, come out of the Federal Reserve. Already there's a movement going on in America, Occupy Wall Street. Already there are movements in America where the states are saying we want to break away because if the America goes down, no state would like to go down with it. So the scenario is actually real. That, that there would be rights in America, there would be food rights, there would be, there would be security rights. There would so be there would be a global economic crisis as well. If, it is already if, happening. You if see, U.S. crashes down, then even the entire if US, global even economic... somehow, if Obama is able to increase the debt ceiling to few, to, to few hundred billion dollars or a trillion dollars or so, that would only be a temporary relief. Know this fact very well. U.S. economy is doomed. It's down, it's finished. You can only get a breather you cannot revive it. It's, as the example that we gave you, that if your income is 100 rupees and your debt is 5,000 rupees on you and your expenditure is 500 rupees, there is no way on earth that you can actually pay back your debts. And this is what is happening with America. They have been surviving for the last 100 years by taking more debts, more loans, but there's always a limit to it. The point so has come, they're going to crash. So we, we discussed about the U.S. Uh, government shutdown crisis and then how it affects the global economic crisis. So how do we get affected under all this scenario? How does Pakistan get affected under you that see, scenario? Very simple. You see, Pakistan's entire reserves are in U.S. dollars. And our reserves are in U.S. economic system. Our, our state bank and private banks have invested the foreign exchange reserves that they have into the Western economic system and they are earning a bank interest on it. And if the U.S. economy goes down, dollar loses its worth. Right now, rupee is losing its worth against the dollar. Right, but right. it's actually the dollar which is losing its worth against so many currencies of the world. 
And if this continues, if the US government defaults, for example, and then the country started to make the reserves in other currencies and not in dollars, then what would we do? And again, of course, because there's, there's so, many, so many investments that Pakistan has, Pakistanis have in US, the Pakistan, millions of Pakistanis who are living there, who are sending in foreign exchange reserves to Pakistan. Right, right. Their economies, they would be affected. Their economies would crash. And millions of rupees of remittances that come in, billions of dollars of remittances that come into Pakistan, they will stop also. They will lose their worth and value. And again, as the fact we say, that... The, so the, how, can we, how can we release ourselves from this dollar bounding? No matter what happens see, to US dollar, how can we exactly. survive without now, this, this that the, uh, this pressure question, on us? This is the question to ask. Every country which is sensible, which is wise, is doing that. They are collecting gold. They are not dealing in dollars anymore. As we said, gave you the example, there are, there are billions of dollars worth of trading between China and Russia, and they are trading in mutual currencies, or they are trading in real wealth, in barter. You give us goods and we give you goods in return, or gold, or mutual currencies. Everybody is avoiding dollars now. And this is what the wise countries are doing. Iran is storing gold, India is storing gold, Russia is storing gold, China is storing gold, every wise country is storing gold. Because they know when the fake paper currency is going to burst, only the real wealth will remain. Real wealth is the one upon which the humans have depended for thousands of years. Every civilization has dealt in gold and silver coins. Kennedy tried to do that. He was assassinated. Mr. The Zaz, Islamic I mean, economic system depends on real wealth based economic models. That's right. why the people in America are now saying let's bank the Muslim way because our re economic model is based on real wealth, not on fake paper. Right. We have just two minutes left and I want to uh, uh, share this with you, the, another aspect of this crisis. Talibans are delighted in U.S. government shutdown and uh, to their statement, in their statement they said that Americans should realize that their politicians play with destinies of their own people as well as the destinies of other oppressed nations for the sake of their personal vested interest. So, as a Taliban, what does this U.S. government shutdown mean? You see, Afghanistan is a graveyard of empires. And normally it takes 10 years for an empire to destroy itself in, on the, in the mountains of Afghanistan. Soviet Union took 10 years, they destroyed themselves. Americans took 10 years to destroy themselves. And the cost of the war that they have waged in Afghanistan was almost $5 billion per month. And it is, almost, it is unsustainable even for a superpower. And what I actually fear is that there is $80 billion worth of hardware, which is American hardware, which is still left in Afghanistan. And what I actually fear is that Americans will run out of money to actually take it out of Afghanistan. And all that hardware would be taken over either by Pakistan or by Taliban. And we are looking forward to that. So the fact of the matter is that Americans have destroyed themselves. Their economy has crashed at home. Pakistan need not fear America anymore. Even if they sustain this particular crisis for a few more months or weeks, they would still remain on artificial ventilator, on an artificial breathing system. They cannot survive now. Their bubble is going to burst. Hundred years of lending and not and taking loans and living on exuberant lifestyles by taking loans and not listening to their founding fathers is now come home to roost. American economy, American civilization is about to be destroyed. Thank you very much, Mr. Zayed Hamid. Viewers, as you saw that we analyzed the global economic crisis that we are seeing these days and then the U.S. government shut down, how that affected the global economic crisis and then how all that comes down to us sitting in Pakistan, how will that affect to Pakistan's economy? This is a bigger question. Let's hope that all these economic crises, they do get resolved so that a person, a regular person sitting in our country can breathe easily. That's it for tonight. See you all next Sunday with more analysis. Allah Hafiz and good night.